Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, somebody, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Do we have any blessed people in the house this morning? Come on and put your hands together.
many know that he's worthy, that he's holy, that he's righteous, that he is the God of all. Let us pray this morning. Dear Lord, Father, how we thank you on this eve of the birth of this nation. How, Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we get to live in it. Even though the trials and tribulations may come, Father, you have still blessed us in such a mighty, mighty way. So, Lord, we say Happy birthday to America on today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for an opportunity to be in your house one more time. Thank you, Lord, for each of those that are joining us here in person. And thank you, for Lord, for those that are joining us virtually. Father, we just pray a special anointing, a special blessing upon each and every one of us. Lord, for, Lord if we had not known you, where would we be? If we did not come unto your presence, where would we be? Thank you, Lord, for continuing to be with us, for continuing to look beyond our faults and not only see but meet each and every one of our needs. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you and we need you, Father. We thank you for the man of this house, Father, the good shepherd, that you would bless him and his family, Father, that you would be with them, Father, that you would continue to esteem him, Father, in righteousness, that, Father, you would give him a word on today that may be poured out unto us, Father, that we, having been hearers of that word, might not only be hearers, but go forth and be doers, Father. I pray, Lord, for those that came today that do not know you, Father, for I think today, Lord, that will be their time to come and give their life unto you. Father, we pray for this communion service, Father, that we get an opportunity to renew our rightful self with you. Help us, Lord. Touch us and keep us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. If you know that 
You know, as Sister Zaria was leading us in worship, I couldn't help but think about all of the wonderful things God has done for not just me, but for each and every one of you, all of the amazing things that God has done for us these past few years in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our loss, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of job loss, how, foreclosures on your house, in the midst of it all, God has kept us sisters and brothers. So why not, why not give him all the glory? All the honor, all the praise, our hallelujah belongs to God. He deserves it. So often we receive grace and mercy daily that we don't deserve. We should be standing on our feet thanking our God for the things that we did not get that we deserved. For the grace that he gives us every day of our lives by the shovel loads. Why not give our hallelujah, our praise, our glory, loans, all of it, all that we have, all that we are, our promotions, our titles, our degrees, our homes, our houses, the money in our bank accounts, our cars that we drive, our children, it all belongs. God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for saving, for saving us. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, God. You deserve it all. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, praise. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, band. Thank you, God. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so awesome to be able to see each and every one of you. Good morning to those worshiping with us online. If we have any visitors in the audience on today, please stand so that our ushers may be able to give you some information. If there are any visitors worshiping with us online, please identify yourselves so that our online ministry can greet you. Thank you so very much for deciding to worship with us on this day. You have, we have so many options and places where we can worship. So we are so thankful that you chose Turner Chapel on this day. On behalf of our pastor and First Lady Bright, we extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you on this morning where we at Turner Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church are striving to make a difference as we love God, love God's word, love each other, and love our neighbor. Thank you. At this point in the service, we set aside once a month to have a missions giving offering. Matthew 25 and 40 says, and the king will answer them, truly I tell you just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did to me. Brothers and sisters, this particular offering is set aside for us to give to those in need, for us to give to the community so we can help those with their light bill, with their water bill, those that are struggling with their rent payments. This is your opportunity to give to the least of these. We have several options and ways for you to give to our missions. Thank you for putting it on the screen. We can use the Cash App, Text Trust, you can do it online, and you can also mail in your gift to Turner Chapel. And the ushers also have baskets if you would like to give them today in the sanctuary. This is your time to give to missions.
Thank you, ushers. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for those that gave, for those that desired to give. God, we pray that that which was given be blessed, be a blessing for many. God, we just pray that we may have the strength to move our feet, to do what it is you have called us to do, to serve one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Psalms 37. Psalms 37. And I'll be reading this morning the New International Version. And it reads as follows. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. The word of God for the people of God. Can we just worship God in this place? Does anybody know that you are safe in God's arms? We've gone through a tough week, but yet he kept you safe. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything He lets me rest in the mellow's grass and he He leads me beside the quiet stream He restores my failing hell And he helps me to do what honors him the most That's why I'm safe That's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe, I'm safe in his arms. Because the Lord is my, my shepherd, He lets me rest in the mellow's grass and he, he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hell and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. I feel so safe, that's why I'm safe, I'm safe in his, his arms, and when the storm
Just safe in God's arms. When I didn't want to be kept, He still saved me. Oh, I'm safe. I'm in His arms. Oh, come on and lift your hands. And I said, I'm safe. of Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Last time, say, say. Now come on and worship God in this place. Does anybody know that you're safe? I'm safe in his arms. Somebody testimony this morning? Is that somebody prayer this morning? Is that somebody prayer this morning? That God will hide you. You so glad. Is there anybody just glad this morning that you're saved in his arms? Is there anybody just glad this morning that you're saved in his arms? Do I have any worshiper this morning? You're just glad that God still is there for you. He's blessed you. He's kept you. Come on, somebody, bless the name of the Lord this morning. Come and give God the praise this morning.
Come and worship him this morning. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, somebody. Think about all that God has done for you. Think about where he brought you from. Come on, somebody. Lift your head up. Open your mouth wide. And say, God, I thank you this morning. God, I praise you this morning. God, I worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saving his all. No matter what is going on around, that's why I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Come and put those blessed hands together this morning. Give God some praise. Come and put those blessed hands together this morning to bless his name. Come and put those blessed hands together this morning and thank him because he's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you so much, praise team. We praise God for blessing us again this morning on this weekend where we celebrate Independence Day. Amen. It's good to see you all in church. I thought some of you were on vacation, but you are in church this morning. Give God some praise for that. Trying to find something that I, oh, okay, this is it. So let me first this morning, before we preach, let me do one or two things. Let me um, acknowledge the presence of our bishop in church. He just came to worship. He didn't want nothing big. He, he just wanted to worship, but we wanted to make sure we acknowledge the presence of Bishop Jackson. Come and give God some praise. He's in the back worshiping with us this morning. Amen. Thank you, Bishop, for worshiping. Uh, you had a long week, so I guess I know what it means to just want to just, just be in his presence and give God some praise. Amen. Again, let me thank you all for uh, the anniversary gifts, the prayers that you have sent to my family. Lady Rita, Tanya, and Tarita, all of us, we're grateful. Uh, this marriage between pastor and congregation has been awesome these last four years. And we're looking forward to what God will do moving forward. Amen, somebody? So we're grateful. We want to say thank you all for your prayers. Next year, when we celebrate uh, our fifth anniversary, we look forward to having a really good time and, and, and looking back and giving God praise for five years. And we have this morning worshiping with us Pastor Daryl and Lady Terry Jones, they're from the Second Baptist Church. Come and give God some praise in Pennsylvania. That's where they're from. Amen. They're worshiping as uh, Yvonne Hargrove. That's a former pastor. And uh, they're worshiping with us this morning. All right. And then uh, before they... The offering, I will give another announcement of the drama ministry to make sure that we're aware of what's going on there. Open the Bibles, please, to Psalm 37. That was read for us uh, by Reverend Ross. The 37th division of the Psalms. If you don't mind, wouldn't you just please stand with me? This morning, we're just going to look at the first two verses of this psalm, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Can we read it together? One, two, three, four. Go. Because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. And like green plants, they will soon die away. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, God, we want to say thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We bless your name for your word that will be preached this morning. 
We pray that somebody will be saved. Somebody will re come to know you as the Lord and Savior. But most also, we also pray that somebody will really be blessed by this word and be encouraged to keep on trusting you. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We, we, we are attempting to start a series for the month of July. Uh, July Sermon Series uh, with the title, Spiritual Insurance in Times Like These. Spiritual Insurance in Times Like These. We did a devotion a couple of weeks ago, and then I told the folks who were on the prayer call that come this month of July, the Lord was leading me to work on this text from this 37th division of the psalm. And so uh, for the rest of these Sundays in July, we will look at spiritual insurance in times like these. And so this morning is part one, and we'll be looking at it from uh, uh, this psalm, part one, stop looking at the wrong thing. It's the first part of it. So I, I, I will make a commitment that I will preach this series. Now look at your neighbor and say, make a commitment to be here in church. Uh, amen, somebody? Part one, stop looking at the wrong thing. Somebody once said that what has your attention has you. What, what, what has your attention has you. If, if you keep on, get this, looking at the wrong thing, eventually the wrong thing will control you. Am I right about it? If you keep on looking at the wrong thing, eventually the wrong thing will control you. And that's why the Bible reminds us that, 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 that get this, you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed. That means that if my mind is staying on Christ, I'll have peace. But if my mind is on something else, I cannot have the peace that God brings. In Colossians 3 and 2, the Bible says this. The Bible says, uh, uh, um, set, no. Yes, set your minds on things above. That's why it says in Colossians 3 and 2. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. So set your mind, set your minds on things above. What, what has your attention has you. And that's why every time I love when that song is, is sung, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. That the hope for all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. It means that I know trouble going to come. I know sometimes I will be attacked, but, but I will keep my eyes on Jesus because get this, Jesus is the center of my joy. Don't get it all twisted. I know I may be driving a nice car. I know I got a nice home. I know I got a nice job. I know I got a nice family, but don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. Jesus is the center 
center of my joy. Not, not what I have, not what I possess, but Jesus is the center of my joy. Is there anybody this morning who can stand up and say, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. Because when I woke up this morning, I knew Jesus was and is the center of my joy. The joy the word don't give and the joy the word can take away. Anybody knows that Jesus is the center of your joy. He is the center of your joy. Hallelujah, somebody. You know, that, that's uh, when, when you walk differently. When Jesus is the center of your joy, you, you worship differently. When, when Jesus is the center of your joy, you, you have a confidence that people don't understand. When Jesus is the center of your joy, you talk different. When Jesus is the center of your joy, when people say it cannot happen, you tell them all things are possible. To them who believe and trust God, when people say they are attacking you, you say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because you understand that Jesus is the center of your joy. And that's why we got to be careful because uh, so many of us spend so much time on social media. I mean, truth be told, since I started this sermon, some of you already look at some people's pages on Facebook. That's all right. I'm, I'm sorry for calling you out, but you know. Don't, don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at anybody. Just look at the preacher. They meant somebody. You know, I mean, you look. And, and, and you know, the thing about it is that uh, you can only see what the person has posted. And, and these phones that we have nowadays, the technology is so good that you can take a picture and somebody will think it was a glamour shot. The picture is so good. And so there's a possibility that some people are living miserable life, lifestyle. But when they post a picture, they look so happy. And then you're looking at it and he said, man, I wish I could be just like him. You don't know what happens before the picture was taken. You don't know what happened after the picture has been taken. But all you see is that picture and, and then you're sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. And you say, I wish I could could be just like him. I wish I could be just like her. Those pictures can be very deceiving. Am I right about it this morning? Yeah. That's, that's why it is important to keep your eyes on God. That, that's why it is important to keep your eyes on God and not on people and not on things. Listen, if you want to look your best, then keep your eyes on God. If you want to feel your best, then keep your eyes on God. There's a scripture that I love in Psalm 33, verse 4. The Bible says, those who look 
to God are radiant. Amen, somebody? Not those who look to people or those who look after things, but, but if you want to shine, if you want to look good, if, if, if you want to feel good about yourself, then you got to keep on looking to God. The psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Hallelujah, somebody this morning. If, if you want to get up in the morning and, and feel energy. If you want to get up in the morning and look in, in the mirror and, and say, God, I thank you, then keep your eyes on God. And this is what David is trying to remind us, that we need not look at the wrong things. You see, Psalm 37 is called Maskey. It's a teaching psalm. That's what it is. It's a, it's a teaching psalm. It's, it's, uh, it's for a practical daily instruction for our lives. It's not so much about prayer and praise. I bless the Lord at all times. No, no. It's there to teach you how to live every day. And so get this. I, I like that first verse. The first verse is, uh, let's, let's read the first verse together. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. Now, in this first verse, there are two things. One, the psalmist is warning us, get this, against being angrily worried. Okay. Okay. And then the second part, he's warning against not liking who you are or what you have because you want desperately to be just like somebody else. So let's look at the first part. Do not fight. It is repeated in verses 7 and 8, and you find this verse also in Proverbs 24 and 19. Sometimes it is translated, don't worry. Do not worry. But the Hebrew word yet yeah, means, get this, to heat or inflame oneself. Don't worry to the point it gets under your skin, consumes you, that you cannot see God, and you have no joy or happiness. You bitter inside. Don't worry, don't fight because of evil people. Don't, don't be angrily worried because of what you see. And then the second part there says, and be envious of those who do wrong. Be envious of those who do wrong. What, what this means is we do not like the way we are or what we have. So we have become envious. We, we want to be so much like the people who are doing wrong. So on one end, you are angry because those who do evil seem to be doing so well, or on the other end, you want to be just like them. I just said something this morning. On one end, you are angry. Somebody say angry. You angry because uh, they, 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 they're living in prosperity. You're angry because success is following them. You're angry because they are wealthy. That's, that's why you are. They look so happy. And so then your anger turns to envy. Well, since, 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 since apparently they seem to be doing well and I'm angry, I just want to be just like them. 
Yeah, I, I know they steal to get what they have. I, I know they cheat. I know they lie. Uh, but apparently, they, 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 they seem to be doing okay. So I want to be just like them. Because I've been coming to church. And pastor been telling me to pay my tithe. And I've been tithing. But things not working out for me. I, 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 I'm, I'm faithful. I, I'm committed. But apparently relationships not working out for me. I, I serve in church. I, I do the best I can. But uh, every time I think I'm taking one step, I go two steps back and and I look at people who don't care about God. I, I look at people who don't come to church. I look at people who I know doing the wrong thing, and yet they seem to be making it every day. I am angry with God. So you know what? I just stop following God. And I'll be just like them. Open your Bibles to Psalm 73. The 73rd division of the Psalms. Okay, preacher. Right? I want to encourage somebody this morning. Psalm 73. This was a Man, a holy man, giving his testimony. He starts off by saying, show that God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. He said, but let me tell you what happened when I started to look at the wrong thing. He said, but as for me, <laughs> my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the weekend. The brother is saying, I, I, he's, you know, it was figurative. It's not so much he almost slipped on the ground. But what he's saying is my faith almost left me. I, I, I used to be a praise leader. I, I used to say I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing in the gates of Jerusalem. Every time the doors of the church was open, I was there. But then one day, things started going wrong for me. And I looked around and I saw the people who didn't love God. I saw them making it. And he said, for a minute... I almost turned my back, on, my back on God. He said, I almost did. If you look at verse number 13, it says, Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. Oh, but every time I read this, this division of the Psalms, verse 17, always make the difference. He said, till I enter the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. Every now and then when you find yourself in a rough place, God will allow you to get in his presence where God will open the door and show you that though weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Every now and then when you find yourself in a place where you can't go forward, where you can't go backward, where you can't go left or right. Oh, just pray that God will open his presence, that God will open the door where you will step in his presence, and God will open your eyes to see the plans that he has for you. God will open your eyes to see the purpose that he has for you. God will open your eyes to see the destiny that he has for you where he's about to take you. He said, till 
I enter the sanctuary of the Lord. Then I understood the end. And, and that's why David says in verse number two, in verse two, David says, for like the grass, somebody say grass. For like the grass, they will soon what? My, my, my. Like green plants, they will soon die away. When, when God gives you the eye of faith, you see there's no reason to envy the prosperity of the wicked. Because God just given them, they, they got an end. They got an end. So this morning, I just want to encourage somebody. Stop looking at the wrong thing. Stop. <laughs> stop looking at the wrong thing. And before I take my seat this morning, let me lift up three lessons from uh, these two verses that I read. Uh, one, and, and listen now, write it down. Stop measuring your worth with what other people have. It meant somebody? Stop measuring your worth with what other people have. When you do that, you're looking at the wrong thing. If you want to measure your worth, remember what God said, let us make man, humanity, in our own image. I want to encourage somebody this morning that you've been created aided in the image and the likeness of God. That every time you look at yourself give God the praise because God himself created you. I don't know it but you but I'm so glad that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise God for what you have but I thank God that regardless of what I have, I know that God is on my side. But, but, but there's, there's a little bit more to this. Uh, <laughs> oh, in, in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me, that is in you, than he that is in this world. Let me remind somebody this morning that it's not the material things that give you worth. It's not what you see that gives you worth. What gives you worth is the Holy Spirit that is living in you. What gives you worth is Jesus that is living in you. What gives you worth is the fact that the one who lives in you, he owns everything. The one who lives in you, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The one who lives in you, he owns the diamond, he owns the gold. Say yes, somebody. Stop measuring your worth with what other people have. Uh, because the greater one lives inside of you. Yeah, yeah, greater lives in you. Look at your neighbor and say, greater lives in you. Greater lives in you. And so when, every time the enemy 
tried to mess with your mind. Every time the devil tried to mess with you and said, look at her. She got two cars. Look at him. He got three houses. He got a job. He got the office on the corner of the building. Just tell the devil, you're a liar, devil. I'm a worth it. It's not based on what they have. I got Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. Let the devil know that when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Say yes, somebody. So, so that's the first one. It's the second one. Second lesson this morning. Tell your neighbor, say, I hope you're listening to the preacher this morning. Stop counting other people's blessing. And start counting your blessing. Oh, okay. I got to move quickly. I was looking at this. This Nigerian shot movie, and uh, the guy came outside, he had about three cars, beautiful suit, and this man said to him, he said, uh, so how did you come about with all of your wealth? And he said to him, when I was poor, did you ask me how I came about with my poverty? <laughs> Stop counting other people's blessing. Oh man, yesterday you came with one car. Today I see you in another car. How many cars you have? That's not your business. That's not your business. Stop counting other people's blessing. Because when you want to be miserable, keep on counting other people's blessing. If you want to be sad, keep on counting other people's blessing. But I heard the songwriter say, count your many blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And so this morning, I just want to boast in God this morning. This morning, I want to count my own blessing. Blessing one, he woke me up this morning. Blessing two, he put a roof over my head. Blessing three, he put food on my table. Blessing four, he gave me clothes to wear. Ah, can I keep on counting? Blessing five, he gave me a good family. Blessing six, he gave me eternal life. Say yes, somebody. Now I know I'm not the only one blessed this morning. I know there are some blessed folks in the house who don't mind counting your own blessing. So look for somebody in church this morning and say, I just want to count my blessing. Find somebody this morning. Find your neighbor this morning. And say, neighbor, I just want Say it! Say it!
Listen. You're in Cobb County. You're so prim and proper in this place. I mean, you are so cute in this place. All right, the person who you spoke to didn't like the fact that you tapped in on the shoulder. But find somebody else this morning. Find somebody else this morning and just give them two blessings. Just send them blessing one. What's blessing one? Just tell somebody this morning because the enemy wants to stop us from seeing how blessed we are. But we overcame. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Is there anybody who can testify they heal your body? Is there anybody who can testify that he ran away out of no way? Yeah! Almost done. Oh Lord. Let me let me share this blessing. In two thousand there was a problem with the roof of this church. And we file an insurance claim. The insurance company dismissed the claim because they said whatever work needed to be done was less than our deductible of $2,500. And so we kept on interacting with the insurance company. Almost a year after that, they said, okay, we're gonna settle the claim for $7,500. But since your deductible is 25, we will send you all $5,000. You know, other people know she never be your yes. And we kept going back with the insurance company. Last week, Mr. Pastor sent a text to me when I was downtown at the Bishop Council meeting. He said, Pastor, I got a check in my hand for $1.4 million. Somebody needs to shout. Somebody needs to praise God. Somebody needs to give God the praise. Don't tell me my God can do it don't tell me what my god can do for 1.4 million dollars when they said no god turn it around let's also lit in the midnight hour he'll turn it around somebody needs to know this morning you next in line for a turnaround blessing you next in line for your breakthrough throw your head up and say do a lord do a lord do a lord do a lord say yeah say yeah say yeah you next in line you next in line you next in line you next in line I said you next in line you next in line say you next in line throw your head up say yeah say yeah I got another blessing I want to share. 
Is that all right with somebody? Reverend Mo, I just want to encourage somebody this morning. In January, the Lord said to me, Tyue, no, he said, T Boom. You gotta, because I came to give my first fruit offering. So we're gonna give $10,000. Mrs. Brandon, myself. So we're gonna get $10,000. And, uh, but when I got up, he said, T Boom, make it 20. I'm almost done. I, I'm doing, since it's a series, I do the third sit part tomorrow. Uh, next Sunday when you come to church. Because I think the Lord wants me to stop right here. And then I said, God, did I hear it right? And he knew my faith was shaking, so he went from Tipo to Taiyue. Taiyue. This is what I want you to do. And I said to my wife, look at me, it's strange in church. But we did it. We were faithful. And my baby says, I want to go to North Carolina A&T. She said, Daddy, I think I can get the owner's full ride. She did all the work. And I was in uh, uh, was one of the bishops' meeting. Also, Savannah, forgotten the city. And uh, no, no, that before that, I came home and my baby was crying. And I said, Tarita, why are you crying? She said, I did not get this scholarship. In my heart, Kevin, I want to say, God, you told me to give all that money for nothing. <laughs> God, where are you? And now we're at the bishop's meeting, driving back to the hotel. My wife called, and she said, I hope you all, you, 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 you know, you got control over yourself. I said, what's going on? She said, your daughter just got an email. She got the full scholarship. She got the full ride to go to NT. I want somebody to know this morning. That God is still Jesus. It's still a way maker. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a promise keeper. I want somebody to know that you're next in line for your blessing. Stop looking at the wrong thing and look to the one who has the lifted of your head. Look to the one who has to preach over all troubled water. Say yeah, somebody. Say yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah.
put us bless your hands together. Come and put us bless your hands together. If you can, stand where you are. Sean and Kevin, count your blessings. Kendo is still alive. Count your blessings. He can. Yes, God can. Stop looking at the wrong thing. Look to God. Look to God. Look to God. I'm a living testimony. God is still able. God is still able. Let me do this. Because in order for you to keep on looking to God, you have to have a relationship with him. You have to. The Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And how do you get this gift? The Bible says in Romans that if we confess Jesus as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we will be saved for with our heart. We believe and are justified with our mouth. We confess and we are saved. It's simple. It's very simple. All you got to say is, Jesus, come into my heart and make me a different person. And then maybe you save and you know the Lord, but you're looking for a good church home. You won't find a better church anywhere. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place to serve. It's a beautiful place to grow. It's a beautiful place to be discipled. And so if you want to give your heart to Jesus, your life to him, or you want to join a church, or you want to rededicate your life, do, do, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. If, if you want to do that, all eyes closed. Just raise your hand. The brother coming down. He ain't been waiting for me. He, he's coming already. Brother is coming. There's another sister that is coming. So do me raise your hand. If you hear, yeah, just come. Just come. Just, just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. I see you. I see you. Don't stop. Don't, don't, don't. Just, just look at that couple coming down. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, church. Just bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Look at that. God is touching hearts. God is touching hearts. Is there anybody else? You, we will wait for you. Come, don't let, don't stop, don't stop. There's an anointing in this room. There's an anointing in this room. Come, come, come. We, the Lord sees you. He knows where you are. Come, come, wherever you are. Wherever you are, come. Today is your day. Today is your day. Don't stop, don't stop. Come. Is there anybody else? Is there another person? We want to encourage you. We do want to encourage you. If you hear, we want to encourage you. Is there another person? We want to encourage you. Come. Come. And then for those who view in the service online, we don't want to leave you out of this. There's a number, there's an email up on the screen. Reach out to us. We will help you. We will pray for you. But repeat this prayer after me, dear God. I give my life to the Lord. I give my heart to you. Jesus, come into my heart and make me a new and a different person. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reach out to us, contact us, and we'll pray for you. Amen.
already know the Lord as a Savior? And what, what's your name again? Monique coming to John Turner Chapel. Give God some praise. You know the Lord as a Savior? Brother Jeff Slow is coming to John Church today. Give God some praise. What's your name? Mr. and Mrs. Sims. They're coming to John Church today. Come on, can we give God some praise? Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Dewberry, this morning I got on my knees and I, I was flat on the ground praying that God will add to our numbers. I pray hard this morning. And God heard the prayer. God is always hearing our prayer. Amen. Amen. We're about to take the offering, but just before we do that, um, the drama ministry um, summoned scholarship production, Esther, for such a time like this, the girl God used to save his people written and directed by our own dear sister, Tinker. I believe after church today, you can purchase your ticket in a bookstore. We want to, this is for scholarship. This year, I believe as we gave more than $22,000 out for scholarship for our young people. And we continue to give it to them. So let us support this production because it's for scholarships. So tickets uh, are on sale in the bookstore. The dates for the production is July 16. Uh, two shows on that day, 3 and 7 p.m. And the next day, July the 17th at 3 p.m. Uh, Sister Tinker, stand up. Sister Tinker has been a blessing to the drama ministry. And she gave it her best. Please let us show our drum ministry and give them the support needed. Amen. It's time for the ministry of giving. You know, I was told, Pastor, always first Sunday in July is a hard Sunday because it's the 4th of July weekend. People spending the money so many places. And just imagine if God was taking a break on blessing us. The Bible says, he who keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep. So just imagine if God was taking a break. And so for us who's here, you heard the testimony. Don't limit your blessing by looking at the wrong thing. Trust God and be a tither. Trust God and give as I was preaching. The Lord lay on somebody's heart and said, Pastor, I know you, you the, the servant leader and you got to share the test to encourage us. But I think God is speaking to me too. Don't listen. Listen to what God is saying. And do what God is saying. Amen. Turn a chapel for this time for the minister of giving. God loves a cheerful giver. We know the different ways for those of us in the church who would like to give physically. The ushers would come. And for those who want to give virtually online, we got the other ways of giving. We can text to give. We can give on, uh, we can, uh, it's on the screen. You know, give online, cash app, and all of that, text to give. We can do all of that. But 
give as God has blessed you. Just wait one minute, ushers. One minute, let me just say a prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the offering. We pray for the gift. We pray, Lord, that even on a harder day weekend, we will be faithful to give as you have given us. We will give our tithe. We will give over and above that we give our offering. Bless the gift. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let us, let us uh, to sing something. And uh, we, we give, and right after that, we do the communion, and then we can be on our way home. Stewardess. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you so much. We pray that God will bless, replenish, and restore uh, from the sources from which those gifts have come. Uh, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all the guilt is stained. Let us all please, if you can, stand. Everybody has received one of those prepackaged edamen. If you haven't, just raise your hand and the ushers will come up to you if you haven't. And for those who are joining us virtually, make sure you have some water, some juice, and a bread so that we all together, collectively, can participate. We got some hands over your ushers. We got some on this side also, ushers. Ooh, the guilt. Lose all the guilty sting. Lose all the guilty sting. Lose all the guilty sting. 
songwriter saying, send us. So true there, earnestly repent of your sins that are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in God's holy ways. Let us with faith take this holy sacrament to our comfort. Let us make our humble confession to God. You be seated. Let us together say the general confession. It should be up on the screen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and weakness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and our heart that is sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever year after serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the, at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him said, surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, yes. It is you. Let us now have the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made that by his oblation of himself once offer a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory that is precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O oh, merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine. According to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, may it be partake of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, after supper, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given things, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament. We should share for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this 
as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us together take the broken bread of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken for you, broken for me, so that we can be made whole. Let us take and eat by faith with thanksgiving. He said, if I see the blood, I will pass over. His blood will never lose its power. It flows from Emmanuel's vein. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus who shared his blood for us. This blood is able to cleanse. This blood is able to heal. This blood is able to deliver. This blood is able to bring about a breakthrough. Let us drink by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, thy kingdom come, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Bible says after they had the communion, the fellowship. And so let us stand up and make our declaration that what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a joy this is mine. Come and sing, let's sing. What a fellowship, what a joy
Have a happy 4th of July. Be careful. Don't do anything that will embarrass you, embarrass God, and embarrass your family. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking to us. Amen. Praise God for more more blessings, flow. Jackson again it's a blessing and we praise God that you came to worship of us this morning God bless you God bless you all Reverend receive the benediction the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom his peace that transcend all understanding that you will understand your worth and don't try to compare yourself with what other people have. That, that you will make sure that you keep your eyes on Jesus and count your blessing and not somebody else's blessing. Now and forevermore, let the sins of God save.